The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. At that time, among those who went up to worship at the feast were some Greeks. So these came to Philip, who was from Bethsaida in Galilee, and asked him, Sir, we wish to see Jesus. Philip went and told Andrew. Andrew and Philip went and told Jesus. And Jesus answered them, The hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. Truly, truly, I say to you, unless a grain of wheat falls into the earth and dies, it remains alone. But if it dies, it bears much fruit. Whoever loves his life loses it, and whoever hates his life in this world will keep it for eternal life. If anyone serves me, he must follow me, and where I am, there will my servant be also. If anyone serves me, the Father will honor him. Now is my soul troubled, and what shall I say? Father, save me from this hour. But for this purpose I have come to this hour. Father, glorify your name. Then a voice came from heaven. I have glorified it and will glorify it again. The crowd that stood there and heard it said that it had thundered. Others said, An angel has spoken to him. Jesus answered, This voice has come for your sake, not mine. Now is the judgment of this world. Now will the ruler of this world be cast out. And I, when I am lifted up from the earth, will draw all people to myself. He said this to show by what kind of death he was going to die. The Gospel of the Lord. I don't know about you, but it's hard for me to believe it's already the fifth Sunday of Lent. It seems like just a few days ago, we were receiving ashes on our foreheads and battling those temptations to eat that Valentine's Day chocolate on Ash Wednesday, where they both collided this year. But here we are at the fifth Sunday of Lent, coming toward the end once again of our Lenten journey. Next Sunday, as we know, will be Palm Sunday, which really ushers in Holy Week, in the highest of holy days, when we celebrate all that our faith is about in Jesus Christ. His life, his passion, his death, his resurrection. If you have the feeling that you really haven't gotten into Lent this year, well, it's a little late. <laughs> but really, it's never too late. And I encourage all of us to embrace that idea. Probably all of us could have done a little better at whatever we've sacrificed, whatever real decisions we made when we began this journey once again, to pray better, to pray more rosaries, to be more attentive at Mass, whatever resolutions we've made. I'll speak for myself. They haven't exactly 
panned out the way I would like. We always seem to fall short, but maybe there's something good about even that. To set high goals, to seek perfection, and to recognize that we aren't likely to attain it, but to keep striving. Sometimes we're told that our Catholic faith, our life in Jesus Christ, our approaching this Eucharistic altar is too idealistic. But brothers and sisters, if we really come to know Jesus Christ, if we really seek to enter into his sacred heart, I don't think it can ever be too idealistic. It is the model of challenge for all of us to enter into this way of the suffering servant that is Jesus Christ. Let's take just a few moments to look at each of these readings. This reading from the prophet Jeremiah, the first reading today, begins in this way. The days are coming, says the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and the house of Judah. We know that that prophecy of the prophet Jeremiah and all the prophets is something that sustained and carried the people of Israel throughout their history, seeking the new covenant, the Messiah, the hope for Savior that would come, that they had been promised by all the prophets. What occurs to me as we hear this reading from the prophet Jeremiah on this fifth Sunday of Lent is that most likely Jeremiah, the other prophets, and the faithful of Israel who listened to the prophets really had no idea how wondrously God would fulfill that prophecy. Not just bringing a Messiah, not just bringing the greatest of the prophets, but giving us his own divine son. If we look at the gospel stories, and we will take a look at today's gospel reading from John, Throughout the gospel, the people, and often the religious leaders themselves, are rejecting the idea of Jesus Christ as he speaks of being the Son of God. I think that tells us that they had no expectation of the wondrous ways that God would fulfill his promise that we hear about in Jeremiah of a new covenant. A new covenant founded on his own son, who becomes incarnate among us, the very heart of our life in our Catholic faith, Jesus Christ, the incarnate Son of God. And so this new covenant is founded on the body and blood, soul and divinity of Jesus Christ, on his very existence. What a beautiful way for God to renew his people by sharing his own son. And if we look through the ages of the new Israel, the people of this new covenant, all too often, and it's certainly true in our time, we fail to really live and appreciate the wondrous love of God and what he offers us in his own son. So as we continue once again this Lenten journey, I re would repeat that it's not too late to grow closer to the sacred heart of Christ, to resolve even today to spend these last days of Lent and to embrace the coming Easter season with great fervor, and to remind ourselves daily of what the prophet Jeremiah and the others of his time through the history of Israel would have been astonished to know that God fulfills his promise of a new covenant by giving us his own son. 
And we are blessed in our Catholic faith to know the presence of the Son of, Je of God, Jesus Christ, here with us, now in this tabernacle, and in a few moments, coming once again in a brand new way on this day, in this place, the Savior of the world comes to us. Let us seek for these last days of Lent for this year, for the coming Easter season, and for every day of our lives to embrace more fully the wonder that the Son of God dwells with us, offering always mercy for our sins that we're called to repent of and to share his life more and more fully. I believe that leads us to the second reading from the letter to the Hebrews. It begins with a simple phrase that I think is worth reflecting on deeply. In the days when Christ Jesus was in the flesh, that says very simply but profoundly exactly what we believe. That Jesus, the Christ, the Son of God, took on our flesh, real flesh and blood, and ultimately offered it for all of us, for all of God's people, for all time. If only we will choose to embrace his body and blood among us, his flesh. In the days when Jesus Christ was in the flesh, as we read those words from Hebrews, I, I know as a little kid, yes, that's a long time ago for me, <clears throat> but I remember as a little kid imagining what a wonderful gift to have been in the world when Jesus Christ walked this earth. I would imagine most of us have had that thought. Wouldn't it have been wonderful to be able to listen to him, to witness him, to see him. And I think it reminds us that in the wonder of our faith, yes, in a veiled way, but in a very real way, we know Jesus Christ in the flesh, in his Eucharistic flesh, his presence before us. And brothers and sisters, as we come toward the end of this Lent, let us pray for each other and for all in the church. It is a travesty that every Catholic doesn't say with a resounding amen that we believe and know that in this tabernacle, in the communion, in the Eucharist we celebrate, truly the body and blood, soul and divinity of Jesus Christ is with us as he promised he would be with us until the end of the age, until the end of time. Let us vigorously embrace this faith more and more deeply for ourselves and urge and challenge and call our brothers and sisters to do the same. As I mentioned in the conference that we just concluded, I think one of the best ways we can all seek Eucharistic reverence, a renewal, a revival of the Eucharist, is to pray for our priests, good men, seeking to do good things. But let us pray that their lives are centered at this altar, that they become more deeply Marian and more deeply Eucharistic. Because we all know the more our priests are Marian and Eucharistic, the more we will be the same. Let us pray for our priests to be strong in knowing and believing that we live in the days when Jesus Christ is in the flesh because he is really present with us. And finally, brothers and sisters, let us look to the Gospel from John, where Jesus reminds us 
The hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. I think this is such an important point for us in the world that we live in. The glory of Jesus Christ is his passion and death, his sacrificial love for all of us. The glory of Jesus Christ is that he loved us so much that he gave his body and blood to free us from sin and death. This is a glory that surprises the world and that too often we as people of faith shy away from. The glory of Jesus Christ is his sacrificial love and his willingness to pour himself out for all of us. And it challenges us to know that glory in our lives can only be found in taking up our cross and following our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We live in a world that loves glory, the glory of wealth, the glory of pleasure, the pleasure, the glory of academic prowess and athletic prowess and popularity. Many seek glory in our world. But as we hear in the gospel, the hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. As we read in other places in Scripture, the glory of Jesus Christ was too often a scandal for the people. How can the Son of God be glorified by dying on a cross? But we know that that is the glory of Christ. Because it unlocks his divine presence among us. He dies for us and rises for us. And all of that is captured at this Eucharistic altar. As we continue this Mass now, to celebrate once again the Lord with us, body and blood, soul and divinity, let us be reminded in each of our own journeys of life, those temptations of glory in this world, we must reject and we must constantly seek the only true and lasting glory that is found in Jesus Christ in the sacrificial love that he incarnates among us, reminding us that we as disciples are to live the same path. Thankfully, the Lord in his mercy knows our weakness knows that we stumble under the crosses that we bear. But even in our stumbling, let us continue to strive to truly follow Christ to his glory, a glory that the world often rejects, but a glory that ultimately shows us what real love is, a willingness to sacrifice for the good of the other. May we seek to really live that love throughout our days.